High cholesterol is associated with better memory function. And it's the preferred fuel for your heart. I mentioned the, um, so atrial fibrillation, high omega-3, 85% lower risk of dying from all causes. Okay, if you could share any thoughts. Oh, I got a bunch of them. Um, <clears throat> there are some things I just actually disagree with when someone says that uh, uh, car that fats are the preferred fuel to human body. They most certainly are not. We our Krebs cycle enzymes in our mitochondria are set up to burn carbohydrates uh, as we dismantle glucose. Glucose is our uh, primary uh, fuel. Uh, fats are an emergency fuel. We need them, and we're always burning some in the background to keep our body temperature up, but it's not the primary source. And fats are rare in, in nature, outside of nuts uh, and the occasional rotting carcass. There's, a, we would, there's not enough fat out there to keep active humans alive. We, were, we lived on uh, the starches. There were the roots and tubers that we, uh, the paleo folks dug up and the berries that they harvested. We've been carbohydrate burning creatures all along. The idea that we were fat eaters, it just, it just doesn't make, uh, make sense. And when he says that the people, that carbohydrates are toxic to the brain or whatever, yeah, you go into a senior citizen's home and you're going to see a lot of old folks in chairs with an open bag of Oreo cookies and a Coke on the, in the glass there, and they're guzzling back all this refined sugar. And yeah, that's going to be hard on the brain. And that may uh, promote inflammatory reactions. That is not what a high carbohydrate diet based on whole plant foods is. Broccoli is 100% carbohydrate. Uh, the, all these green yellow vegetables are essentially all carbohydrate. Uh, the, they are not pro-inflammatory. And there are healthy starches, uh, resistant starches, et cetera, and, and legumes, et cetera, um, that really supply the carbohydrates in, in a form that we require without inciting inflammation. Uh, you go to the, uh, the vegans who are eating high carbohydrate whole food diets, and you check their inflammatory markers, and they're low. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory diet to be pulling these terms out of the air. Oh, it sets off inflammation. Show me. Show, show me the HSCRP and the spinal fluid. Show, where, where is this? Uh, the the assertion don't really have any basis there, so um, I, I think the uh, the terms are being really loose used quite loosely and distorted as far as uh, fat burning humans and toxic carbohydrates. Uh, I think it's a distortion of what a truly healthy whole food plant based diet really is and should do in the human body. Thank you. And I I completely agree with Michael with what Michael said. Um, uh, it you know the, the the first study you talked about I'm quite sure that the vast majority of the carbohydrates in that in those diets uh, were refined. I think it's it's um, important also to recognize he mentioned that you know human history we you know had low carbohydrate diets that is simply not true. The the best evidence we have on Paleolithic nutrition showed fat intakes of around twenty percent, some as high as thirty five. But carbohydrate intakes ranged from, you know, 45, 50% to about 65% in most of the analyses. Um, carbohydrates were the primary fuel for the human brain. And, you know, the most current knowledge we have on Alzheimer's summarizing uh, data was a 2020, uh, 2022 review. And what they, you know, said over and over again in this review was, was that you know there are many uh, attributes, and this was really looking at plant-based diets. This was a review of plant-based diets and the incidence of Alzheimer's, and and um, the many attributes uh, of of a low-fat plant-based diet. You know, low saturated fat, no cholesterol, high vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grain, lots of fiber, lots of antioxidants, highly anti-inflammatory, tons of phytochemicals all sorts of protective vitamins and minerals uh, that, you know, the we see protective effects of Mediterranean, DASH, MIND diets, all of these that have, have more fat, but the fat is generally healthier fats. Um, and, and generally, um, plant predominant diets with, with lots of fruits and vegetables do well, but vegans actually have even better antioxidant status. They have less inflammation. They have less hypertension, less diabetes, less cardiovascular disease. 
they 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 have all of those things reduce um, Alzheimer's disease risk. They have a lack of TMAO production, and TMAO is associated with brain aging and cognitive impairment. So you know, and and we have to say, well, well, vegan diets generally are very favorable in terms of of brain health. There are some potential downsides, like low B12, low vitamin D, EPA and DHA possibly. So in my opinion, 100% plant based diet that's reasonably low in fat with sufficient B12, vitamin D and EPA and DHA, it would be optimal. And I think I would I would refer listeners to Dean and, and Aisha Shirzai. Uh, they've written, you know, the Alzheimer's solution, the 30 day Alzheimer's solution. They have, you know, some great information. Uh, but yeah, I fundamentally disagree with many of the remarks uh, that uh, Gabriel Cousins made. I'll make, I'll make the score is three to nothing. Yeah, Dr. Look, Campbell, do you, your camera has gone off. Is it possible to turn your camera back on? Sorry about that. Okay, yes. There you go. Yeah, as I say, I'll make it three to nothing. I, I think both of you, uh, Brendan and Michael, have made excellent points. Uh, and I would just like to add another thing, too. Uh, too often when we're talking about the findings of this, that, or something else, we talk about uh, uh, statement or uh, kinds of nutrients, if you will, and, and very generally, much too generally, uh, high carbohydrate diets for the most part, as far as their difficulty is concerned, we all know is, is the refined uh, sugars. And too often people don't, I think, Michael, you made a reference to that, of course. And so, you know, the, that kind of carbohydrate is not what we're talking about. I happen to agree with the natural carbohydrates, all of its nice elements that to do what they do. And and so I, I, I couldn't disagree more with what the, he said. Um, I would also uh, ask maybe all of you, and he too, uh, you may recall a guy named uh, Neil Nedley. I don't know whether anyone knew him. He wrote a book on this just some years ago. He had a very different opinion. And I got to know him somewhat uh, those many years ago. And he would say exactly the opposite, talking about cognition, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing. I, I can't remember us talking about Alzheimer's. And that, but uh, I just had a lot of respect for the way Neil was faced with the question at that time, 30 years ago, I guess it was now. Uh, so I don't think we've really changed too much. So anyway, I don't have too much more to add. Uh, there's another thing that we tend to bury in our thinking, I think too often, when we talk about high carb, low carb, when we shouldn't be talking about so certainly as if just that's the problem. But we tend to leave out the idea of protein and the kind of protein. Uh, as you all probably know, I've spent my entire career working on animal protein in particular, and it's somehow left out of the discussion too often. We start talking about other things that in place of that, like saturated fat or this or that. The animal protein, I have to say, as far as its biochemistry is concerned as to what it really does, is a major, uh, major dimension of the concept that we're now having. And so, I just find it really difficult to just talk about one thing, high carbohydrate, without talking about you know, what kind of carbohydrate we're talking about, uh, let alone the kind of omega-3 fats and omega-6, omega-3. So there's a lot of other stuff going on here. And uh, I think it's, it's pretty good to make comments like that. Since 86 or somewhere around there, percentage of carbohydrates eaten by people in industrialized countries are refined carbohydrates. Almost any study that they're citing means that the majority of carbohydrates are refined carbohydrates that are being addressed. A whole plant food diet free of added salt, oil, and sugar is going to have somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of calories from fat, around 10 percent of calories from protein, and the majority are going to be whole plant food complex carbohydrates. So first of all, you can't really make an even remote comparison between people on refined carbohydrate diets and people on whole plant food diets. And in my own experience in practice, now I've practicing for 40 years, I'm getting to see people now, 30, 35, 40 year follow-ups. And I'm seeing those people that are in their 80s now, they're sharp, they're doing well. Many times they're actually outliving their children that have been on refined carbohydrate-based diets. So I think we can all agree, refined carbohydrates have serious problems, but the idea of attacking the primary fuel of human beings, that is whole plant foods, as being health compromising, I think is just ridiculous. <laughs>